Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the T uh, Pan Asian Destroyer line, and this is the Tier 9 Chongmu. And the Chongmu is the former USS Airbin DD631 of the Fletcher class destroyers. She served in the Republic of Korea's Navy from 1963 onward. And her current whereabouts are actually unknown, but it's highly likely she was scrapped. Chung Moo served as an integral part of the South Korean Navy until 1983 when she was converted into a stationary training vessel. She was scrapped sometime thereafter, and again, it's not really well known. Uh, if you want to see more about the history and the design development of Chung Moo and the USS Airbin and the Fletcher class, I highly recommend checking out my video on the Fletcher class destroyers, which we go into in-depth detail about the reasons why this is probably the most important destroyer class ever built. Of course, there was like 178 of them built or something crazy like that. Uh, so it's no surprise that a large number of these destroyers ended up in foreign service after World War II and after Korea when the U.S. Navy decided it was time to move on from them. Um, USS Airman, for her part, uh, in the U.S. Navy anyway, was given six battle stars for service in World War II and four for service during the Korean War. In terms of in-game play style, Chung Mu is every bit of Fletcher and, in my opinion, even a little bit more. There are a few differences, most notably is that Chung Mu has a slower rudder shift time by six tenths of a second and a larger turning circle radius of 620 meters. Chung Mu also has a 100 meter advantage in detection over Fletcher at 5.7 instead of 5.8 kilometers. She also boasts worse mid-range AA, but better short-range AA. Uh, it doesn't really even out because Fletcher gains access to the defensive fire consumable and Chung Mu doesn't. Of course, Chung Mu gets the ability to use radar, as well as the Pan-Asian Destroyer Smoke, which basically allows this destroyer to sit in smoke indefinitely. Of course, the big thing to talk about is the torpedoes, because as most people know, Fletcher is an unbelievably well-rounded destroyer at tier 9. In fact, it's been consistently rated as probably the best tier 9 destroyer in the game. Me personally, uh, as far as tier 9 destroyers go, Fletcher was the top contender until I got to Chung Mu. And the reason for that is simple. These torpedoes are ridiculous. So the 10.5 kilometer 66 knot 19,000 damage Fletcher torpedoes drop half of their detection just by becoming deep water torpedoes. Yeah, you can't hit destroyers with them, but Fletcher never really relied upon her torpedoes to kill destroyers anyway. That's why she has five of the U.S. 5-inch Mark uh, 38 caliber Mark 30 guns. Ridiculously high rate of fire, very accurate, do good damage at close ranges, uh, Chung Mu will fight it out with the best of enemy destroyers and will probably come out on top against anything aside from maybe a Kid, a Z-46, and another Chung Mu or Fletcher. So, uh, <laughs> very, very capable ship, very well-rounded, and in my opinion, takes all the things that made Fletcher really strong and kind of amped them up a little bit. The ability to basically sit and smoke indefinitely makes Chung Mu very, very capable. Add in the fact that the 10.5k torps, they go 66 knots, they do 19,000 damage, and have a 0.8 kilometer detection range. And this ship is a fantastic battleship and cruiser killer. It's even pretty solid at killing destroyers because the guns are so good. Uh, you know, the only real downside to the ship is it gains, you know, almost five... Uh, all, eh. It's about 70 meters of turning circle radius. It's really not that big of a difference. It's also faster to boot. 38 knots compared to 37 and a half or 36 and a half knots. Uh, very, very capable ship. Um, in my opinion, this Chung Mu has replaced Fletcher as my go-to tier 9 destroyer. It is that capable of a ship. Uh, let's talk about some of those stats. 20,250 hit points. It's going to be with survivability expert on the captain. That is the same as Fletcher. <sighs> you don't even lose hit points <laughs> getting Chung Mu. Main battery consists of the same 5-inch, five, 5 single uh, gun mounts. 
12.1 kilometer range. You do lose about 0.8 kilometers of range. But uh, the U.S. 5-inch 38 cal guns are really not that effective out to 12.1 against anything aside from maybe a stationary battleship. Uh, you're really not going to be shooting the ship all the way out at max range terribly often unless it's a larger target, in which case wouldn't matter. The 0.8 kilometers doesn't matter that much. Uh, they do have a 3.3 second reload time, which is blazingly quick. Uh, that is going to be, I think, with basic firing training. Nope, no basic firing training. So that's 3.3 seconds stock because there are no gun reload buffs on this ship. Uh, 5.3 second 180 degree turn time and only a 5% fire chance. Slow muzzle velocity, rainbow arcs as some people like to call them. But hey, US 5 inch guns are plenty capable. Torpedo tubes, you got two quintuple launchers. There's 10 total torpedoes. 81.1 second reload time, uh, 10.5k range, 66 knot speed, 19,033 damage. Again, 0.8 kilometer detection range. That is just crazy. <coughs> Yay. All right. So that's really the strong suit. Uh, the AA defense, you got six dual 20 millimeter Orlikins, two dual 40 millimeter Bofors, one quad 40 millimeter Bofors, and then the five. 5 inch 38 cal dual purpose guns. Uh, your AA bubble starts out at 5 kilometer, steps down to 3.5, and, and then down to 2, just like every other US destroyer. And uh, obviously, you gain bonuses with advanced and basic firing training to those. Uh, Chung Mu without defensive fire, though, I would not recommend trying to set the ship up as an anti aircraft destroyer. I just don't see a need for it. Fletcher does that way better because it has defensive fire. Max speed of 38 knots. This is just slightly faster than the uh, Fletcher is. 620 meter turning circle radius, 3.1 second rudder shift time. Detection range by sea of 5.7 kilometers and detection range by air of 3.3 kilometers. Now let's look at upgrades. I am running main armaments mod 1 in the first slot. And this is for the 20% reduction in the risk of your main battery and your torpedo tubes being incapacitated as well as a 50% increase in the hit point pool of your torpedo tubes and main battery, and a 20% uh, reduction in the time it takes to repair your torpedo tubes and main battery, even if they do get incapacitated. Uh, this, combined with preventative maintenance, makes uh, for a very durable ship. You don't seem to lose your guns or your torpedoes that often. Uh, you know, obviously you're going to lose them more than like a cruiser or battleship will, but for a destroyer, it's really not that bad. The only other one I would consider running at this tier is Magazine Mod 1. If you are out of detonation flags, this would be a solid choice. It is a 70% reduction in the risk of your ship's magazine being detonated. That would be a solid choice if you were out of detonation flags. In the second slot, I am running Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction to the risk of your engine being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair your engine if it does get incapacitated. You could run Steering Gears Mod 1 here, which is the same exact thing as Propulsion Mod 1, except for, for your Steering Gears. Which one you choose really depends upon, you know, what you hate losing the most. For me, that's engines. I hate losing the engines on ships, if you can't tell. <laughs> With last hand on the captain, you know, losing your engines isn't that big of a deal. Or, sorry, losing your rudder isn't that big of a deal. Losing your engines is a big deal, even with last hand. In the third slot, I am running Aiming Systems Mod 1 for the 7% reduction in the dispersion of the main battery. Uh, also doing it mostly for, and actually mostly doing it for the 20% increase in the speed at which your torpedo tubes traverse. Uh, everything else obviously doesn't apply. The secondary battery stuff doesn't apply because there are no secondaries on this destroyer. Uh, you could run AA Guns Mod 2 if you really want to push this ship into a role that Fletcher is better at. I personally don't recommend it. When it comes to other things at this tier, your turrets turn so fast that there's no reason to take this at all, ever, in my opinion. Uh, in the fourth slot, I am running Steering Gears Mod 2 for the 20% reduction in the rudder shift time. Is this necessary? No. Does it help? Yes. Uh, I personally prefer this on this ship. On Fletcher, you could definitely toss this up to either or. Uh, Fletcher's 2.4 second rudder shift time is obviously faster than the 3.1. Uh, but Chungmu without it is it's just a little too slow and a little too sluggish at the helm. 
uh, for me to really feel comfortable in it, which is the reason why I run Steering Gears Mod 2. Uh, you could also run Propulsion Mod 2 if you want. That's going to increase the engine power when the ship first starts moving, as well as decrease the time it takes for the ship to reach full power when accelerating. This is only going to really impact the ship between the negative 6 and 6 knot range. Extremely useful for sitting in your permanent smoke, or near permanent smoke. Uh, so you could run this if you wanted to uh, do more pew pew in the, in the smoke. Don't recommend purple, uh, sorry, don't recommend damage control system mod 2. If you're on fire or flooding, bad things have happened, or your damage control party is up. In the fifth slot, I am running Concealment Systems Mod 1 for the 10% reduction in the detection range of the ship. The 5% increase in dispersion of shells fired at you is just a nice side effect, but uh, being able to get the ship down to 5.7 kilometers is super nice. This is probably... Let's see, Kigero, Yugumo... Those two ships definitely have better concealment in this tier range. I think Shiratsuyu is pretty close, if not the same. Um... Beyond that, I you know, there ain't much else stealthier. <laughs> That's a scary thought. I guess if Shimikaze gets the detection range buff that they keep talking about, uh, Shimikaze would match this. <laughs> well, it'd be just slightly. 100 meters longer to, uh, than the updated Shimikaze, but uh, very stealthy ship. In the last slot, I am running Torpedo Tubes Mod 3 for the 15% reduction in the Torpedo Tube reload time. This does come with the added downside of increasing the chance of your torpedo tubes being incapacitated by 50%. Combine preventative maintenance with main armaments mod 1, and this basically becomes a non-issue. So, I don't personally foresee this being an issue for most players, but, uh, you know, some people don't like losing their torpedo tubes. To me, having your most devastating armament come up that much quicker is super nice. Uh, AA Guns Mod 3, I guess it's there for those who want to spec this into a role that Fletcher is better at. And Main Battery Mod 3, you know, the 12% decrease in your main battery reload time, you're only looking at taking it from 3.3 to 3 seconds or thereabouts. Is it really worth that? No. Adrenaline Rush will do the same thing, and it's going to be Captain Skill Points you're going to eventually spend anyway. So, I personally don't see an advantage to Main Battery Mod 3, and of course, adding firing range to your main battery, not really all that useful with these guns. So, Torpedo Tubes Mod 3 is my recommendation. The only other thing to really talk about here is the smoke slot. You do have access to surveillance radar, 7.5 kilometer range, 17 second active time. So, very short active time. You're only going to get about 5 salvos in, maybe 6 if you're lucky, and... Really not that useful, in my opinion. Uh, I would much rather have the smoke generator, which, like I said, is basically permanent smoke. Each smoke cloud is active for 70 seconds. It takes 76 seconds to reload. <laughs> so, um, actually, I think that's with the... Yeah, that's with the cons this flag. Hang on, hang on one second. <clears throat> it takes 80 seconds to reload, so... Ten seconds after your last smoke cloud disappears, you have smoke again. <laughs> Permanent smoke, basically. Especially with the reload consumable module. Or, uh, flag. So, anyway, uh, Chungmu, a lot of fun. Let's go look at it in a battle video. Alright, so... Chungmu, I only played, like, a handful of battles. I want to say, like, four before I got this battle. Um, and it basically exemplified everything that I have come to know and love about Fletcher. Uh, very good guns, very good torpedoes, very good concealment, um, you know, good smoke to use. Uh, just a very capable overall ship. Map is Okinawa. This is one of my least favorite maps in the game. Thankfully, I am playing it on a ship that has good concealment and thus not terribly concerned about <laughs> really anything at this point. If I wanted to, I could stay invisible for pretty much ever. Only uh, one radar ship in the entire enemy team, and that is Des Moines. Uh, no destroyers on the enemy team that can really outspot me by any meaningful amount. Shimakaze, Benson, they're all pretty much in the same ballpark. Um, so we're going to go Cap C. And, uh, you know, we got good torpedoes. Definitely don't discount the use of these torpedoes. I'm going to tell you... 
Um, these torpedoes are a step above Fletcher's. Even though you lose the ability to target destroyers with them, it is impressive how devastating these torpedoes are. And if you get battleships and cruisers that are willing to cooperate with you and sail into them, all the better. If you can get close enough to these enemy ships to launch torpedoes, whether they're charging your smoke because they don't have any other choices or what, you can really devastate ships with them. Uh, you got 10 of them. They do 19,000 apiece, which means even the best torpedo damage reduction system in the game, hovering right at 50%, isn't going to be enough to really keep you from one-shotting most battleships if you hit with all 10. Uh, and hitting with more than one torpedo is very easy, obviously, because they are, you know, such stealthy torpedoes. If there was ever a case for the Japanese destroyers being outclassed by another nation's destroyers, uh, it would be the Pan-Asian destroyer line. That would be my biggest concern for those destroyers. Um, we, you, you've seen me play Yoyang Yang in, the, in live stream before. That ship is very capable as well. Even more frightening, in my opinion, than this ship. Obviously a co clear and superior ship to the... Um, to the gearing, and we'll talk about that next week when we get to the Yoyang video. So you can see here I'm using my stealth actually to uh, surprise Shimakaze. you're not the stealthiest ship in this game. So I was able to slow down, <clears throat> and Shimakaze not able to spot me, so bailing out. Uh, what we do have is we do have an Alabama coming into this area, kind of thinking about what I really want to do. Not a whole lot of support over here. We have Republic and a Mogami, and that's it for our support. Not really all that much support when you think about it. At this point, I am hunting for targets in which I could engage with said torpedoes. I'm eh, gonna wait for the... Aha! It's a good thing. Patience is key. When it comes to torpedoes, one thing I notice is a lot of people are very impatient, and so they will go ahead and they will launch torpedoes at the nearest thing that possibly could move, and then they'll be thrilled when they actually get hits, and yada, 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 yada. Uh, so anyway, Alabama, charging into the cap headlong. We managed to scare the Shimikaze out of the cap. We are going to get the solo cap on this, and look at this torpedo spread. Whew. Managed to launch those in, in such a way that the only way that uh, you know they would get spotted is by him. The spotting plane, obviously not a factor, but didn't quite launch it far enough ahead. So there's the best torpedo damage reduction in the game, 50% reduction, and still ended up with about 10,000 damage in torpedoes. We have Bismarck, we have a Shimikaze, we have an Alabama. Uh, really not all that concerned. Katusov is off hiding in his smoke. Really not that big of a deal. At this point, I'm just going to use my detection range. We're 7k away from this Alabama. And there's not a thing he can do. He can launch a scout plane. Okay, fine. Launch your scout plane. <laughs> Torpedoes are almost up already. We haven't fired our guns at once yet. And... 6.6k... Uh, <laughs> you know, hey, what, what, what's... Uh, oh, spotting plane going to be a pain. Well, fine. We'll deploy our smoke. We'll sit in it. We'll just burn him down. Well, I thought maybe we were going to flat out miss, but oh, okay, so we got hit by a secondary. And he shoots and he misses. <laughs> but I got a fire. And look at the direction he is turning. Oh my. <laughs> that first set of torpedoes that I launched, and get one, get two torpedoes. Now he is flooding and he is on fire in two places. Not having a very good day of this. And the gun's just pecking away, and poof, we got him with the flood. So we managed to take out one thing. Of course, we do have to worry about, oh, hey, look. <laughs> is that a Benson coming to play? Is that a Shimikaze coming to play? That New Orleans is spotting both of them. Of the two, which is the bigger threat? You guys take the guess. It's the Benson. The Benson has the better uh, the guns for this, and oop, our root. <laughs> well, that was short-lived. Both of their destroyers just completely destroyed. Uh, managed to get out of there in time. Uh, I believe those are 20 kilometer torpedoes from the Japanese destroyer. Those get spotted way far out. Not very good at getting destroyers in smoke. Especially not ones like... <coughs> sorry. 
Especially not ones that are actually paying attention. Options to shoot at at this point. Well, we have Katusov, and that's about it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Katusov, I would love to get into uh, torpedo range of him, and that's what we're going to try and do. Briefly spotted there. Ah, that might give our give away our, our play here. As far as, you know, feigning direction and all that, didn't really get a good, hard, you know, look at him. Uh, we're going to launch a set, and, I'm, you know, I was kind of anticipating him running back towards the, his, the rest of his friends. And, you know, if there were ships that were being spotted, like this Yamato, if he was spotted... Uh, he, the Katusov would be firing away like he is, but uh, surprise, the Katusov is running away. Probably a smart move on his part. I'm hoping that by the time my torpedoes get there, and this is one of the downsides of having fast torpedoes, but I'm hoping that by the time my torpedoes get there, he will have turned around into that field of torpedoes on his way back to his friends. And as you can see, not so fortunate. So we're not going to get anything on Mr. Katusov. Looked like maybe he was going to turn back into the field just in time to snag some, but nope, he is sailing on a course straight away. It's kind of unfortunate. At this point, Yamato, we could get a lot closer to him. We also have a Conqueror there. Uh, Katusov is really the biggest threat to me, but he's kind of being squirrely. So Yamato... Uh, you know, he, he looks like he's doing the typical thing. He's backing up. This is a very common tactic for uh, the Japanese battleship Yamato. Uh, spent a lot of time bowing. Uh, kind of Iowa-esque in that regard. You'll see there that I launched torpedoes both at the marker and then one set directly at him. And we're going to deploy smoke and shoot at him as well. Uh, why? Well, for one... With him backing up the way he was, um, you never know when he's going to stop and go forward again. And so that's what I was trying to uh, kind of key up on. And so we're just going to shoot at him. And uh, hindsight being what it is, probably shouldn't have deployment of the smoke and being shot at probably keyed him up to the fact that there were torpedoes on the way. That said, getting ourselves a fire. Hoping for there's a second one. And nope, he's going to eat one torpedo. And that's that. Now he's on fire and flooding, mind you. We're up to 88,000 damage, just stacking up the damage there. And then it goes away. <laughs> Dang it. Well, that kind of stinks. Hoping for another fire here any minute now. Down goes the Richelieu. Our Shimakaze managed to get a good torpedo salvo off on her. Now hoping for another fire, maybe get us a Yamato, maybe cross over the 100k mark here. Oh, come on, come on, these guns. You can see, not really adding up a whole lot. Into well, there he goes. <sighs> so now we have Conqueror. Um, smoke cloud running out. We've got ourselves into the midst of a, uh, a cyclone here. And launched, again, launched a set. Uh, we're like, well, what's he going to do? I don't really know. Well, we're detected, so we're going to launch another set. Four seconds left until the smoke deploys. Until we've got smoke again. We've got smoke again. We're shooting at him. And deploy our smoke again. And like a ninja, whoop, disappear. It's too late. Mr. Conqueror is going to eat torpedoes. Five of them, mind you. 67 some odd thousand damage and somehow Yamato managed to get the kill. Oh. Ah. Well, <laughs> it's very quick how much damage you can add up with very potent battleship uh, potato knit. Well, it's not really his fault. He did the right thing. He turned in. The problem is, is he probably didn't turn in aggressive enough. Uh, to, to really mitigate that, but he had a choice to make between myself or the Yamato. Well, who do you who do you choose in that? Do you choose the one that has the ability to delete you outright or the one that's going to do a boatload of damage? I personally would have probably gone bow into the uh, Chung Mu over the Yamato, but 
I, I don't know what it was going on in his mind. Maybe he didn't have the rudder shift to get there. I don't know. But either way, he ended up taking five torpedoes, and we did a lot of damage and rapidly crossed over the 100,000 mark in one fell swoop. Of course, launching those torpedoes as close a range as I did, there really wasn't a whole lot he could do to avoid them. Again, leveraging the stealth of this ship to really push um, the envelope as to what you can and can't engage. Now, at this point, you know, the Kutusov, I really thought the Yamato was going to be able to handle the Kutusov by himself. You know, you've got... Very, very powerful 18-inch guns, 18.1-inch guns, 460-millimeter or 46-centimeter guns on Yamato. There's really nothing a Katusov can do at 8 kilometers to get away from those guns, aside from just WASD and Prey. You never know. Some Sometimes things happen. In hindsight, I probably should have stayed and helped the Yamato if I possibly could have. Well, hindsight being 2020, you know what they say. On the other side, we got Ibu Ibuki up here at A, the A cap. Uh, this game is basically a foregone conclusion, but you got to see some of the strengths of the ship. You know, we started three fires, got 150 shell hits, nine torpedo hits. Holy cow, nine torpedo hits at 19,000 damage. Granted, every ship that got hit by torpedoes had a 50% reduction for torpedo, except for the Conqueror. And it still ate 60,000 plus damage in one fell swoop. So, I mean, you can see just how strong this ship is and how capable this ship is. It really is a hoot to play. And when it comes to dealing with other destroyers, sure, we didn't get to see much in the destroyer versus destroyer engagement on this. But the ship plays no, different than the, no differently than a Fletcher does. It has slightly worse maneuverability, but really it's not that noticeable. It's a very, very capable destroyer hunter. It's an even better battleship hunter, as you saw. I mean, just, oh, the, the nuking of battleships is absolutely hilarious. Um, and Yo Yang takes this to a whole new level of scary. And how these ships made it into the game in this form, like... I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't see the deep water torpedoes as being overly balanced in their current form, but... And there's the kicker, Katusov torpedoes kills the Yamato, so in hindsight, like I said, probably should have stayed with him. Ibuki goes down, we never even got to see him, we never even got shell hits, we're stuck at 169,386 damage, and the match is going to end here shortly. Overall, you know, like I said, Fletcher... Ramped up just a little bit higher. You know, we got the better torpedoes, which I would gladly trade. Uh, the the ability to hit destroyers for these torpedoes. If Fletcher had these torpedoes, I would be ecstatic. That ship would be brokenly overpowered. Uh, you know, Chengbu is, is a very capable destroyer in its own right. And it really gives up nothing to get this, aside from AA, which at Tier 9, you, you really don't see very much in the way of carriers. Uh, and if you do, you know, it's still not bad AA. It's really, it's really a good ship. I can't say enough positive about it. It really is an amazing boat to play. So let's look at the end battle screen here again. 169,800, no, 385 damage. 169,385, only one kill, one cap, two, uh, sorry, three fires, a bunch of shell hits. Look at the torpedo damage, 116,349, just as easy as pie. I mean, it was really that easy to remove two battleships from the game, just boom, boom, like that. And with a little bit better thinking, probably could have gotten more. Anyway, love Chungmu, fantastic destroyer. I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching.